You'd be surprised how often I get requests to do a serious review on this channel, unless of course you guessed never. I avoid them because it's not often I can add something to the conversation not already thrown onto the field by the approximately 200 million game review outlets on the internet these days. I tried a long time ago to make a review of the game No Man's Sky, but it was very bad, like the game. In fact, it was so bad and non-representational of my channel that I unlisted the video. Recently, the developers of No Man's Sky Hello Games released an update meant to improve their bad product, so in the spirit of plucky never say die stick to itness, here is my updated review. It was the summer of 2016. Harvey Weinstein thought he was in the clear, the idea of a Trump presidency was starting to look less and less like a throwaway joke on The Simpsons, and the game No Man's Sky was released in near universal panning. It was tedious, shallow, dry, and totally without the multiplayer that had been promised in the many years of build-up to the game's release. One might have expected the developers of No Man's Sky to take the money they made from the massive amounts of pre-orders and ride off into the sunset like a swindler of the Old West, leaving the townsfolk behind to grind endlessly in the vast loneliness of space. But to the surprise of the neglected townsfolk, that November, Hello Games rode back into town and released what they called the Foundation Update. While not a total overhaul of the game, it added more depth in the form of buildable bases with only like four possible rooms. So maybe not so much deepening the gameplay as much as scattering a few crumbs in the hopes of picking up the rest of the pigeons. They also added more game modes like survival, which changed nothing about the gameplay, and creative, which did change the gameplay in the sense that you could endlessly stack those four rooms as much as you liked. In March of 2017, the townsfolk were startled when another update was fired at them en masse from Hello Games. This one was called the Pathfinder update, and it added vehicles that were all but useless when compared to the starting ship, but fun to drive around. It also added support for the Steam Workshop, which added even less because developing mods for a bad game would be like the British Royal Mail Service adding an automatic letter sorter to the Titanic. The third update was called Atlas Rises, because I guess Atlas had yet to rise or something, and it included 30 additional hours of narrative. It was 30 additional hours of boring and repetitive narrative, but I'm just a simple man trying to make his way in the galaxy, and the laws of probability state that at least one person holds the story of No Man's Sky up there with Amadeus, or Lord of the Flies. But these updates were small bananas compared to the ones Hello Games was planning for July 2018, nearly two years after the game's initial release. No Man's Sky Next was released to a great deal of praise and excitement from my peers, who are only my peers in the sense that E.L. James is technically a peer of Margaret Atwood, and it is this congratulatory circle jerk into which I ride today in my trusty steed of cynicism. Is this really a good game, or are we merely blinded by what it once was? Did Hello Games lower our standards or meet them after the fact? I'm going to try to ignore the ethical questions about releasing a game before it's finished and lying about its content to draw up sales. These are questions best left to channels with far more subscribers than I. I'm also not going to just review the game as it stands because games exist as a record of gaming and this game is a pretty long record. Personally, I'm a proponent of reviewing this game as compared to what it was and indeed what it could have been. It used to be when you opened the game for the first time you started next to a broken down ship, which was important because if you spawned in a planet that had radiation levels akin to Pripyat, you could hide in your ship until your anti-radiation underwear recharged. But this time in Next, when I opened the game and I spawned, I was in the middle of an empty field with no ship marker gracing my compass. With my skin blistering, I picked a direction and just sprinted, hoping I'd find my ship. But I guess it was over the opposite hill because I never found it and I soon died of a combination of radiation and sadness. The biggest change I've been hearing about is the addition of true multiplayer, and you'd better appreciate this because I had to go pretty deep into my Rolodex to find some friends who not only owned the game but actually wanted to play it. Actually, my friend was the one who found my ship for me and ended the vicious cycle of death and spontaneous reincarnation. So we played it for a while, and the only discernible difference between this and single player is that now instead of one confused player running around in circles trying not to get irradiated to death, there were now three confused players running around in circles trying not to get irradiated to death. It's certainly nice, it makes the universe feel less empty, but I don't think it constitutes a real change to the gameplay. No one wanted to share resources, or indeed knew how, and no one wanted to set up one of the bases that the game forces you to do in the vain hope that doing so will remove the prompt from your UI. Eventually I did, just to declutter my screen, but soon after another message took its place and the cycle continued. For whatever reason, the game is dead set on getting you to start crafting, even if you don't want to. That being said, the crafting system has cut out a lot of the ancillary needlessness, like how warp fuel needed to go through like four useless items before you could actually use it for anything. There are still items about as useful as a lawnmower in a cooking competition, but when you combine it with 30 units of ferrite or whatever, it becomes a mixing bowl and suddenly gains some utility. So at least we've gone from three useless items clogging up our underwhelmingly limited inventory to just one. And sing hallelujah because now you can craft the same item over itself. It used to be if you needed two metal plates, but your inventory was full of thruster fuel you desperately needed to leave the planet, you would have to sacrifice some of that fuel to free up a slot and craft the plate, then drag it over to the other metal plate. Now you just hover over the existing plate, press a button, and the sensible thing occurs instead. I'm told the graphics received an upgrade, but apparently not in any way visible to me. Textures and meshes still pop in more than Kramer from Seinfeld, and at one point my frame rate was chugging like a freshman college student at his first keg party. But let's move on to the inventory because it's still embarrassingly small for the sheer amount of resources we're expected to carry. And I still hate the UI and I hate how moving the mouse makes the tabs run away from the cursor like the inventory is terrified of being left behind so you can craft some more metal plates. 
But this is treading into nitpicky waters and the UI is technically functional. I just think it's weird how everything is on different menus that require different keystrokes. I should also point out that there's no way to exit the game from the mode select screen, which is either a design oversight or I'm totally incompetent. And let's just say I don't trust Hello Games not to make those kind of design oversights. And why do I have to load a game before I can select my options menu? Yes, it seems the game is breaking new and exciting ground as it finds all new ways to jerk us around. Well, let's get back to the game itself. The base building has been expanded to a really weird degree. I thought the point of the game was exploration. Why are you trying to get us to squat on an asteroid like we're homesteading? But you need to explore to find blueprints so you can learn how to build new things like windows and doors and toilets. But then you just come right back to the same place you put your toilet and build more toilets with fancier lighting. The reason you explore is so that at some point you don't have to explore, and I don't like this. I feel like every change they've made has been to the detriment of exploration. Maybe they felt the game needed more challenge, but this isn't any skill-based challenge that feels rewarding. This is just creating distance between me and the only reason I bought the game, its only unique selling point. Just for kicks, I started a game in creative mode where you don't have to mine every single tree in the world and you can just go on an intergalactic sightseeing tour. For some reason, you still have to go and wave your hands around pretending like you're loading resources into your fuel tank, but whatever, as long as I can just go explore. And this is when I actually started having fun. When I didn't have to worry about dying from radiation on every planet or run back to the space station every few minutes to dump all the dilithium clogging my inventory, I could just have a passive experience exploring the universe. You see, when you sacrifice elements of your game at the altar of Minecraft, all you do is make your game like every other crafting survival game on Steam. This one just has the distinction of being in space with a lot of unused real estate. What was once a unique game with its own identity has fallen prey to the homogenization of survival games and just become another drone in the mindless horde of crafting base building zombies. I would have preferred if they had focused the updates more on the unique selling point of the game, maybe added more variation and life to the universe. Because even though I was having fun being Space Charles Darwin discovering a new species every few minutes, two hours was about all I could stand because that's how long it took to see everything the game had to offer. After that, all the planets and animals start to blend together in your mind until they too have been stripped of their uniqueness. Maybe uniqueness isn't the right word, because nothing in this universe is very unique, only visually distinct, and usually only slightly. As vast as the game universe is, it still isn't very deep. Any depth has been added to the crafting and base building systems and really exists at odds with the unique selling point of the original game, free exploration. That exploration is something no game has done better than No Man's Sky, but if you want another crafting survival game, you have about a billion better options. If you liked No Man's Sky before, you probably still do, and if you were never interested, this probably is not for you. If you bought it and hated it like I did, then check it out again and see if you can get your money's worth like I'm trying to do with this video. I guess I should say that despite the harshness of my criticism, I am happy that Hello Games took the effort to actually improve the game they had the balls to sell for 60 bucks, and I will certainly agree that there is enough content now to justify the price, even if that content isn't for me personally. Where Dr. Frankenstein threw his monster out to terrorize the innocent villagers, Hello Games has at least tried to make its game better, bringing it back into the lab and teaching it construction and mineralogy. Today, if publishers sell enough pre-orders, which No Man's Sky most certainly did, then they can tell the public to piss off when they complain. So it's laudable for a developer to take ownership, even if that's the only business decision that makes any sense for them, which it most certainly was. Consider for a moment Mass Effect Andromeda. It was also released to less than stellar reviews, no pun intended. After it was clear the game had more bugs than a non-state newspaper in Moscow, EA shuttered the studio and tabled the Mass Effect series indefinitely. This is why I think the ethical question of supporting Hello Games is a bit of a moot point, because these two studios are very different. EA is a large, sprawling, betentacle company with lots of stakes in the fire, so pouring resources into a single failure to try to turn it around didn't make much sense. Not to mention who would buy a game from the studio that put something like that out. Shuttering Bioware Montreal made the most sense because EA could take the loss and keep moving. No Man's Sky was the only thing Hello Games had. If they failed with this, their studio would never be taken seriously again, and there were no corporate entities to fall back on. The games industry today is very much a game of names, and bad press can be the death of a small studio. I guess what I'm saying is don't hold or spend your money in some sort of moral statement trying to teach EA a lesson, because they're not going to learn it anyway.